you should know by now that the DTV transition won't affect you if you watch TV exclusively using a cable or satellite service. You don't have to do a thing. And if you watch an old analog TV using an antenna, all you need is the converter box. That'll allow you to receive and watch the new digital signals, including those being broadcast in high definition. But you won't be able to experience true high definition. You need a high definition TV for that. And that brings us to another way to be ready for the DTV transition. And we give the consumer that, that option of, hey, if you do want a box and utilize your existing antenna, no problem. Feel free to do so. And that may be important, such as in the bedroom or in the kitchen. But if you have a main TV that you generally watch all the time, you may want to upgrade to a high-definition TV. Talk to people and tell them, here's my situation, and that's how I like to start things out. Here's, here's where I live. Here's what my size my room is. Here's what I want. Here's how much I can spend. And Every, the people are knowledgeable for the most part in these stores and they know they, they do it all the time they know what you're looking for they know what's best but don't limit yourself just to one place go to a couple different places see if they're saying the same thing well first we we ask them how big their room is some people just want a big TV even though their old one is just fine they still want to upgrade to these new TVs um, and of course the new TVs have the box built into them so for people with an antenna there's nothing to worry about there <laughs> I work in television, but I don't know much about the technology. I do know that the new high-definition pictures look great. Once you see them, it's hard not to be impressed. The family decided it was time to upgrade, so here I am, ready to buy a new TV. My question is, I need a set, and I don't even know where to begin, mm -hmm. and I have a cabinet that I want to make sure that my TV fits in. So we've measured and think maybe 32-inch okay. is about what will fit, because mm -hmm. I don't want to get all new furniture. Right. But I have all these questions. So do I want an HD set? Is there an SD set? Mm -hmm. What is projection screen, flat screen, plasma? Can you help me out? You bet. Uh, number one, if you're looking for a 32, we'll just start there. Right now in the marketplace, 32, you, your, your choices are limited in that they would be strictly a flat panel. Okay. And it would be an LCD. For the most part, there are no plasmas in that size category. In the United States yet. Let's say I got new furniture and mm -hmm. I wanted a plasma. Mm -hmm. So how could I, what's the difference? Well plasmas and LCDs are two just two different technologies. They accomplish the same thing as one car to another car does but they just do it differently. So a plasma uses a mixture of gases that mix together to excite phosphor on the screen. The phosphor is what emits light. An LCD liquid crystal display, there's two uh, sheets of glass with liquid cells between and they're backlit by a series of fluorescent bulbs. So wow. it's just the way the picture is uh, presented on the screen. So if I have the choice, if I've got a 42 inch plasma and a 42 inch LCD, can I tell the difference? Is there one that's better than the other? One is not definitively better than the other. There are some plasmas better than some LCDs and there are LCDs better than some plasma. So we just have to be comparing apple to apple. Okay. Sometimes the differences in the picture, um, because there is inherent differences between plasma and LCD, and those differences sometimes uh, are preferable to some people over the other, one over the other. Okay. Randy and I also talked about projection TVs. As the name implies, the picture is projected, either from the rear of the screen or from the front, like having your own little movie theater. Thanks to Randy, I was becoming an educated consumer. If you take the time to talk to friends and family and shop around a bit, you'll be able to make a better choice. The first thing you want to look at is specs of the television. Um, first is size, application, and price range. Um, size, you definitely want to look at double your screen size, and that should be your minimum viewing distance. So if you're looking at a 50-inch television set, you generally should be right around 100 inches away from the TV for minimum viewing. We just looked at the picture on in the store, playing a, a movie or a DVD, whatever they were doing, and that's what we did, you know, based our purchase on was that had a really good picture, was good and clear. Obviously, these are all digital processes that their, their selling points are, so it, we knew it was going to fit in our spot in the corner, and we knew what color we wanted it to be, and, and so away we went with it. I guess I, I was just uh, taken back by 
again, how, how clear it was, uh, how much the, uh, the picture was alive with color and that. I just you know, wasn't, wasn't expecting that, that kind of an experience. Well, the big thing we tell people on, uh, if they've got kids and they've got a, a new game, a TV game, you can't do that on the plasma. Or you can, but you've got to be careful. So the, the LCD is better that way. If they've got a lot of sunlight, the plasmas will have some reflection, whereas the LCDs, there's no reflection. The plasmas, when you go to the bigger TVs, are the cheaper way to go. I sell from 50 on down are all LCDs, and the 50s and 60s are plasma, because it's not cost effective to do it the other way. Um, but that's the main thing, is, is the, the, the games, the reflection, um, and how big the room is, you know, things like that they all have to consider. Well, when you're shopping for a new TV, probably the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is what you're going to use it for. If you're going to have it hooked to cable, if you're going to have it hooked to satellite or antenna, um, if you're going to hook it to cable, which is still predominantly analog right now, uh, then you have to look at the resolution and differences in how the TVs will cope with the analog signal. Uh, plasma, for instance, does a little better job of coping with the analog signal. The edges of the picture are just a little smoother um, and a little less digitizing on the screen, on a plasma screen. Uh, LCD looks fine when it's hooked to a higher resolution input, such as a, a higher resolution satellite or the antennas now with, with the full resolution coming from them. When I look at these sets and I see the different sizes, I see stickers on them that say HD, right. I've heard about SD, can you help me understand what that is? What do I see? What's the difference? Well, today any television that has a tuner in it by, by federal mandate has to have the high definition uh, decoder built into it, so uh, that allows uh, a customer to uh, receive a over-the-air broadcast of the new digital signal. Um, so for the most part, everything is high definition. Um, high definition uh, uh, television sets would not mean necessarily that everything you watch is in high definition. It depends on what's being broadcast by the by the cable company, by the satellite company, by the over-air networks. So the TV itself doesn't make things HD? No. HD is digital, but digital is not necessarily HD. So Is this some sort of word riddle? Well, in a way. This isn't as confusing as it sounds. As Randy explained, HD, or high definition, is still a digital signal. It's just much higher quality than a standard definition picture. Not all programming is in HD, but as time goes on, more and more will be in HD. Your new HD set will pick up both types just fine, and you'll be able to watch both SD and HD programming using a converter box hooked up to an analog TV too. But you need an HD set to see true HD in all its widescreen glory. So I'm looking at these and I see 1080p, right. 10, I've heard of 1080i. Are these things that I need to pay attention to or is it? Well, they can be. Those are all issues that uh, would determine the, uh, the full capabilities of the set. Uh, you have material today being broadcast in 480i, uh, like you said, uh, 1080 and um, uh, 720 are broadcast standards. Ideally, you would like to have a set that is 1080p, to have all the latest and greatest features is in an ideal world where you'd like to be at. Do you have to have that? No. Okay. You can get a uh, really nice set uh, that is uh, rated at what they call 720 and still have a really nice set. Okay, and still better than the set I have now at home. Yes. So now you've said the TV doesn't change the signal, right? It doesn't make something HD, but I want to be able to watch it, and I hear that channels are broadcasting in HD. Mm -hmm. I don't know that because I just watch over the antenna. Do I need to get a new antenna? How do I work that with the antenna? The antenna talk you heard from Dan and Jim Williams in Iowa Falls also applies to your new digital TV. This is our antenna, and I was quite surprised that just that little antenna would do such an excellent job of receiving all the stations that we receive. Originally, I thought that maybe we'd need to get a special antenna, but apparently you don't need a special antenna, just the one that you have will probably work great. A lot of people come in here thinking they need to put up a new antenna that's HD compatible. Well, all the antennas that we've put up for 20 years, as long as it's a UHF, VHF, all-channel antenna, it's already compatible. You don't need to go out and if the box says HD, that says that's gonna, gonna work for you. The, the antenna that you probably have on your house right now is gonna be fine. There's really no such thing as a special HD or digital antenna. 
That said, you'll often hear people say that your existing antenna should work just fine. Emphasis on should. It's definitely a case where you do need to talk to someone in your local area to find out what you're going to need for an antenna. Um, Iowa Falls is a very different uh, position geographically from Des Moines than, say, Ames. So the type of antenna you're going to need in Iowa Falls is, is a much bigger antenna with a lot higher gain than what you're going to need in Ames or down in Des Moines or in the suburbs of that area. Um, down there, it's perfectly fine to go buy a set of rabbit ears and hook them to your converter box. You'll be very pleased with the picture you'll get. Up here in Iowa Falls, rabbit ears are almost worthless. We very, very seldom find a time they work. Randy was a big help, and I have to say that the TV shopping experience was not bad at all. After narrowing my choices to fit my needs, I just picked what looked best to me. I now have a high definition set at home hooked up to a set of rabbit ears. The picture looks great, and I am learning new things about digital and HD television all the time. My husband was able to hook everything up, but it can get kind of complicated. Did you know your dealer can install your new digital TV for you? It's a good thing to ask about when you're shopping around because charges can vary a little bit. It's a good idea to find out now if your existing antenna gets the digital channels nice and strong in your area. So maybe before you buy a new TV, try the converter box on your existing television. That way, when and if you're ready to buy a new, high-definition digital TV, like maybe during one of those great sales, you will be all set to get great reception. And that's about it. Some people get this stuff, some people don't. And you shouldn't feel at all bad if you don't. Just remember that there are people who do and who want to help you. The Iowa broadcasters in your area would be happy to hear from you. And don't forget about your local retailer, of course, or a friend or a family member. And if you're someone who likes learning about this sort of thing, the website we've been showing you throughout this program is a great place to start. But as always, the best way to learn is just by doing, and the sooner the better. I want to thank all the Iowans who helped us out with this program, including my friend Dan Karcher. We're going to close now with a word from Alfred Stenzel, proud owner of two new digital converter boxes. I'm Jennifer Conferst. Thanks for watching. At our age, you, we have to learn to accept change because that's, that's something that's just a fact of life. Yes, I do think it was a change for the better. Yes, I do, very definitely.